I feel like everything in my life is working out. Even things I would have never thought would happen to me is happening. I just got an office job, never had an office job in my life. I didn't go to college, I had a friend lie and say I was qualified for the job and they believed them, now I'm there. They gave me a company laptop, I don't even have a computer in my house. That's my way of saying they're never gonna see that laptop again, that's my laptop. <laughs> I feel like nobody at the job is excited for my little wins, but I've never worked with laptops in my life. I'm learning as I go. Last week, I finally learned how to CC somebody in an email. Come on, son. I didn't know I was sending that shit one by one my whole life. <laughs> Took me like a whole week to get a hundred emails off. One for you, one for you. I was kind of high my first day. Somebody was like, yo, can you CC me? That was like, you want me to close caption that shit too? Are you serious? <laughs> I looked it up, it means carbon copy. I don't even know what carbon copy means. I thought they were just throwing letters together at work trying to fuck with me. Somebody said, yo, you made a mistake. You CC'd me when you should have BCC'd me. I was like, oh yeah? <laughs> Keep fucking with me, I'm an ACDC these emails too. <laughs> I don't have any tattoos, but I could appreciate some nice artwork. You know, I have a coworker, he has a dragon tattoo, that shit is fire. I feel like if you get a word tattoo, that's a little lazy. I have another coworker, he has discipline tattooed on his left forearm. I'm pretty sure he could have discipline without that. What if you got long sleeves? Now you're gonna be on Ruli all day? He said, no bro, I got it because I'm trying to quit cigarettes and every time I reach down, I'm reminded I need to have discipline. I was like, yo, I don't think you're gonna make it. <laughs> In two months, you're gonna get who gives a fuck on your other arm and just switch hands. <laughs> Let's see how long that lasts. I was on my lunch break the other day, finally realized why people like Starbucks more than Dunkin' Donuts. My whole life, I thought it was the quality and food is not. When your order's ready at Starbucks, they say your name. When your order's ready at Dunkin' Donuts, they scream your order. <laughs> If I whispered when I was ordering to you, I was obviously embarrassed of what I was getting. <laughs> I'm high, I'm insecure. Nobody needs to know what I'm about to do to myself. <laughs> I was just trying to feed the munchies. Next thing I know, the lady was like, who got a dozen donuts? I was like, yo. <laughs> I'm the only one in here. Why'd you scream that shit, yo? <laughs> Did that on purpose. Just cause I downloaded an app on my phone does not give it the right to start giving me notifications whenever they want to. That's a form of harassment. Every day I get harassed by Grubhub. There's one thing I'm high, I got the munchies. Every other commercial is a food commercial. The last thing I needed was for you to send me a notification at two in the morning. I don't need you to tease me. I looked at my phone, I thought it was a booty call. It was Grubhub. <laughs> They were flirting with me hard. They're like, yo, what up, big man? We haven't seen you in a while. It's five dollars off your next order. I was like, yo, you so toxic. I like getting high on mushrooms and listening to my favorite songs as I grew up and stuff, you know? Those songs that really motivated you when you was a youth. My favorite song of all time is Fly Like an Eagle by Seal. Or the Steve Miller Band, if you're white. That's a nice song. It's a nice song. Listen to it the other day, he don't make sense, that whole damn song. Word for word, he said, I want to feed the people with nothing to eat. I want to shoe the people with no shoes on their feet. I want to house the people living in the street. There's a solution. Let me fly like an eagle. <laughs> How the hell is that a solution? <laughs> Thank God that shit is in a song and not a bill. That's crazy, right? <laughs> Could you imagine you ask somebody for help and they never and they said that shit to you? You would never ask for help again. <laughs> yo, bro, I need you. I'm desperate. I got you, bro. Ah! <laughs> yo, yo, that's fucked up. Take me with you, bro. <laughs> if all you ever had in your life was an office job, you're probably not excited for me, but I've never had a job like this. As a matter of fact, this is the first job I've ever had in my life that gave me benefits. I never had benefits, that shit is nice. In this country, you can have a job that pays you $100,000 a year, and if you don't have health insurance and something happens to you, there goes all your money on that hospital bill alone. It costs $14,000 just to be in an ambulance. 
All I'm saying is the job doesn't pay me all that good, but them benefits got me feeling bougie. <laughs> I be at the bar, be talking to women, I be like, yo, I got all these benefits. <laughs> but nobody to share them with. <laughs> it gets so lonely at the doctor's office. <laughs> Fuck a cab, we could get an ambulance. <laughs> As you get older, you gotta, you gotta grow your confidence on different things. As a matter of fact, when you get into relationships, you have to think, what do you bring to the table and is your partner matching that? If you're still getting into relationships purely based off of physical attraction, you're letting yourself down. When I'm in a relationship, I have a job, my own apartment, I do comedy, I have no kids, I got benefits. <laughs> I'm the complete package. <laughs> I was on a date and this girl was like, how big is your penis? <laughs> I was like, what you should have asked me was, how big is my pension? <laughs> the way my pension is set up, when we get married and I die, I can still take care of you for another three years. <laughs> my penis can never. <laughs> Where you take somebody on a first date says a lot about you as a person. You have to be very weary of that. If you take somebody to the movies on a first date, you're showing them that you're not confident in your conversation skills. That's why whenever I go out on a first date, I always take them to the museum. <laughs> museum is classy, underrated, nobody ever sees it coming. I'm so confident in my conversation, I'm gonna try to talk to you about a painting that I don't see nothing in. <laughs> That's confidence. My only problem with museums is I always leave there feeling like I gotta step my vocabulary up. Be a bunch of intellectuals throwing big words around. I like taking women to the museum because I feel like it shows them a side of me that doesn't really exist, anybody else? <laughs> it's all a facade. I learned that word at the museum. <laughs> There's a C in that word. <laughs> It'll throw you off. I was trying to sound smooth, I was like, it's a facade. <laughs> This might sound weird, but when I'm at museums, I don't, I don't really look at the paintings. I just listen to other couples and I try to pick up on new words. I'll be trying to add it to my repertoire. It's a bougie crowd, y'all not excited by repertoire? I'm listening to this one guy, so poetic. He was describing the painter to his day. He was like, you see how the artist rendered their emotions into every stroke of the brush? Cathartic. <laughs> I was like, yo, I can see why he's getting some. <laughs> I'm over here telling my date, you see how he colored outside of the lines? <laughs> Abstract. <laughs> As a guy, I feel like every time I go out on dates, I get forced into ordering drinks that I don't actually like. Because I'm a man, I have to make masculine choices in my drinks too. I could never enjoy myself. I always have to order whiskey. That shit is nasty. <laughs> Every whiskey commercial, they say the same shit. This whiskey has been aging in a barrel for 18 years. You know what that shit tastes like? Something that sat in a barrel for 18 years. Why are you gonna judge me as a man because I ordered a pina colada? Shit's come with pineapples, cherries. They make songs about pina coladas. If you love pina colada, I love pina colada. My only problem with pina coladas is I feel like they never put it in a regular cup. <laughs> they always put that shit in the curviest cup you ever seen in your life. <laughs> Pina Colada be looking like a bad bitch when it comes to the table. <laughs> this for you? Yeah. <laughs> you ever try to out love your girlfriend? Your girlfriend says, I love you, and you tell her, yeah, I love you. But then she goes, I love you more. And she expects you to love her more than that. <laughs> You're not gonna win. <laughs> I've learned this, as I got older, women are competitive with love. They'll try to show you for no reason at all. You could be minding your business, your girlfriend will say some crazy outlandish shit just to show you how much she loves you. The other day, my girlfriend was like, I would take a bullet for you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's been six months, you don't got nothing else going on? <laughs> you got, you're not trying to see that college degree, nah. <laughs> But I felt like a loser. I said, you know what? I would see you trying to do that, spin around you, take the bullet for you, trying to take the bullet for me. <laughs> I thought I won. <laughs> she goes, I would see you trying to do that, take the gun I have in my purse, put it to your head, so the guy he has to shoot me before he shoots you. <laughs> uh, 
I was like, forget about me. I don't think you love yourself. <laughs> you had a gun this whole time? <laughs> Fucking shoot him, yo. <laughs> and she got mad at me. She was like, what would you do? What would I do? Ah! <laughs> My Instagram at Julio Diaz Comedy. Enjoy the rest of the show, y'all. <laughs>